This is the Great Vocal Majority video cast. The news media versus President Trump. This video highlights several lifelong Democrats in the news media. First up, Chuck Todd. Look, a lot of this press conference had to do with the president airing grievances about the press. And, I, you know, we got to remember what this is. It's a political tactic. It's one that is a familiar one. But he is going, going at it in a way we haven't seen a president do since Nixon in those early 70s days. But this is a tactic he wants. He kept bringing up Hillary Clinton. I think he misses running against her. And if he can't run against her, he wants all the bad stories to be grouped into... Uh, the country's collective anger at some uh, member of the press corps. So that is, to me, was a deflect, defensive mechanism that he was trying to do. And it can rally his own troops for a while. Blaming the press is a popular thing among some in the conservative base. But to do it almost on every answer over time, it's not playing well on Capitol Hill at all. And over time, it's going to start hurting him with sort of so the skeptical voters story. that he got. People that weren't big fans of him but voted for him anyway, they'll be the first ones to leave if he continues to do this. First of all, Chuck Todd is wrong. When attacking the media today, it's not like attacking the media in 1973. People don't trust the media anymore, and they don't trust it because of people like Chuck Todd who have political ties. This is Chuck Todd's former boss. He's the liberal Iowa Senator Tom Harkin who recently retired. When he was in the Senate he was rated the most liberal senator in the entire US Senate and that included a time when a socialist named Bernie Sanders was there and I don't know what you would call him but Barack Obama was there. Certainly very very liberal. But Chuck Todd doesn't refer very much to his past as an aide to Senator Tom Harkin, does he? And he does have an interesting choice of uh, facial hair. Next up, Chris Matthews. I have to offer a small confession here. Like anyone who's ever served in big time politics, there are times when I wish I was in the room with this new president and could say, you know, Ronald Reagan was a strong leader, and he knew some things you should know. He knew that he got so much done, not by barking at people, but by finding ways to work with them, to quietly and courteously build the ties that get things done. And that includes showing respect for those whose profession and honor it is to tell the American people what and how you're doing it. When he said today, America first, it was not just the racial, I mean, the, I should say racial, the Hitlerian uh, background to it, but it was the uh, message I kept thinking, what does Theresa May think of this this morning when she picks up the papers and says, oh my God, what did he just say? <laughs> it's just like a volcano of dumbness. Now, understand something. Chris Matthews is here lecturing the current president of the United States about being courteous and polite and showing respect. In the meantime, He's referring to the same man he wants to, to, to have respect him. He's referring to that guy as Hitlerian. But who is Chris Matthews? Well, here are his two former bosses. He was a speechwriter for Jimmy Carter. And while he was an aide for Tip O'Neill, he helped engineer six government shutdowns. Have you ever heard Chris Matthews refer to his experience engineering government shutdowns during the Ronald Reagan presidency for the House Speaker Tip O'Neill at the time? Have you ever heard him once refer to it? No, you haven't. Probably the best quote to describe Chris Matthews I've ever heard. A volcano of dumbness. Thank you, Tucker Carlson. Next up. Jake Tapper of CNN. It was a wild press conference. Uh, and I think that, uh, first of all, purportedly, the purpose of it was to introduce his new Secretary right. of Labor nominee, Alexander Acosta. He talked about Jim Acosta more than he talked about Alexander Acosta. He talked about Hillary Clinton more than he talked about Alexander Acosta. He spent the first part of his uh, remarks talking about accomplishments that he thought the media, the fake media, whatever he wants to call us, were not paying enough attention to. But then, instead of focusing on these accomplishments and offering an optimistic, positive view uh, of what he's doing for this country, it was an airing of grievances. It was festivus. It was 
complaints about the media. Uh, at one point he said the leaks were real, but the news is fake, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. He said things that were not true. Uh, Peter Alexander from NBC pointed out one of them when he said he had the biggest electoral victory win since Ronald Reagan. That's not true. Clinton, Clinton, Obama, Obama, George H.W. Bush, all were bigger, but um, mo moving, on, moving on to that. Uh, if you are a, a soldier in harm's way right now, if you are a, a hungry child in Appalachia or the inner city, if you are an unemployed worker in a hollow shell of a steel town, that's not a president who seemed rather focused on your particular needs and wants. That's a president focused on his bad press. It was unhinged, it was wild, and I can't believe that there are Republicans and on Capitol Hill and in the White House who don't understand that might play well with the 44% of the population that voted for the president. But a lot of Americans are gonna watch that press conference and think, that guy is not focused on me. I don't even know what he's focused on. Here's the problem, and this really makes me sad because I kind of like Jake Tapper. He does, from time to time, do some actual reporting that can't be construed as biased. But here he's really showing his bias. He's really showing his disdain for President Trump. Let's go through it. The last thing he said, that this wasn't going to appeal to... Uh, the majority of Americans, just the 45% or so of the people who voted for, for him. Well, that's not true. The media is not trusted. The country does not trust the media because of people like Jake Tapper. But he also said some other things that are, that are also inaccurate. He said Trump doesn't sound like he's uh, for the soldiers. The military loves Trump. They love him because he's said many times that he wants to rebuild the military after it's been gutted by President Obama. Why wouldn't they like him? And why would one press conference sway them from that when he's dressing down the media, who everybody doesn't trust to begin with? Then he says that if you're a child in Appalachia, well, Appalachia happens to be coal mining country. And Trump just just opened up coal mine in those areas. In many of those areas, coal mining is the only way to get employment. But Jake Tapper doesn't see that. And then he talks about the ghetto, a child that's living in the ghetto. Well, guess what? Donald Trump actually has a plan for that. He has a plan for that in terms of law enforcement. He has a plan for that in terms of school choice, which is what people in, in inner cities have been screaming about for decades, that the Democrats will not provide them. He's talked about urban revitalization, and he's had experience doing it in New York City. But Jake Tapper doesn't see any of that. He just thinks that well, they have an answer. They've, they've disrespected the mainstream media. How dare he? He's not answering the questions that'll help these people in these, in these places that didn't vote for him. He's completely wrong. And then when he talks about the blue collar workers, practically everything that you can point to that Trump has done already has benefited blue collar workers. People know the media is the problem. And I'll tell you why now Jake Tapper doesn't really get it and why people like him are the problem. For example, Let's ask this question. Who is Jake Tapper? Jake Tapper's former boss is this woman that you see here, Marjorie Margolis. Marjorie Margolis was a former Democratic congresswoman. He worked for her. Do you ever hear Jake Tapper talk about his days working for Marjorie Margolis? No, you don't. You know what else you don't hear Jake Tapper talking about? Who his former girlfriend is. His former girlfriend is Monica Lewinsky. Now, Monica Lewinsky is not a politician, but Monica Lewinsky is a Democrat. She is famous for everybody that everybody knows happened to her with a Democratic president. But who is Marjorie Margolis connected to? Marjorie Margolis is in-laws with Hillary Clinton. And you know why? Because Hillary Clinton's daughter married Marjorie Margolis' son. So now you have a connection between Jake Tapper, Monica Lewinsky, Marjorie Margolis, and the Clinton family. I mean, this is ridiculous. These people are all in bed together. The media just doesn't understand. They really don't understand. They don't want to understand. They are the problem. When Donald Trump went before them the other day and he confronted them to their faces and said what he said, he wasn't attacking the First Amendment. He was attacking them. Because these people in the, in the mainstream media who are all connected to the Democratic Party, and there's a lot more that I didn't show in this video, these people 
hold themselves out as being defenders of the First Amendment. One final word about why I believe that the media is really blowing it here. They don't seem to understand that people have memories. They remember how this very same media and these very same people that I pointed out in this video, how they all treated Barack Obama when Barack Obama was president, how they fawned over him, how they gave him the, the most softball kind of questions and the most kit glove kind of treatment that you could ever hope to have as a president. And they see the radical departure from that kind of treatment to this kind of treatment, which is clearly a sign of bias. Now, I'm not saying that the media should treat Trump the way they treated Obama because they should never have treated Obama the way they did. But what they're doing now is a clear sign that they are biased and their histories as professionals shows that they have political backgrounds. You know, for many years, it was not ethical for a person to enter journalism coming out of politics. It was usually, if it ever happened, it was people going from journalism into politics, but never back into journalism. And that is one of the biggest problems. And what has happened now is that all of this, all of these media types are not only coming out of journalism school, being trained by extremely left-wing professors and colleges that we all know about, but we're also having political operatives becoming reporters. And they're clearly, uh, they clearly are biased. And they're in a, an environment where everyone around them agrees with them. So people see this, and the media has no credibility. And when Trump was in front of them the other day, he's telling them, you don't have credibility. It's important that they gain credibility. And they can gain it not by kissing Trump's butt, but by at least reporting on the things he's actually done instead of trying to search out scandal, trying to get leaks from Obama operatives still in the government who are making illegal leaks. I, I mean, they're really, they're jumping the shark. They're jumping the shark, folks. And that's what I wanted to say today. Thanks for watching. This is Tony Cotaspati and the Great Vocal Majority. Take care.